It is difficult to build a relationship and to work with someone who is predisposed to not like you or to not trust you. Let's take a few minutes to discuss considerations you can use to build rapport. Building rapport is the art of establishing a relationship so that you can work with somebody who probably doesn't like you or trust you. This helps you accomplish your mission, and it helps you to get what you want. As a Special Forces officer, I had to build rapport with countless hostile organizations and people. In fact, building rapport is such an important skill that they even taught us methods to build rapport in the qualification course, and they evaluated us on our ability to build rapport. But building rapport isn't limited to just the military. We all have opportunities to work with or deal with people and organizations who are hostile and non-permissive. Let's talk about some considerations for building rapport to include finding common ground, tribe, appearances, kissing the ring, commodities, gifts, and timing. Let's start with finding common ground. The best way to build rapport is to find common ground. If they want A and B, and you want B and C, looks like B is the common ground. Before you do anything, you better establish some common ground, and it doesn't even need to be related to what you want to accomplish. This common ground is usually just a foot in the door. I've already made a video that summarizes how to win friends and influence people. If you haven't read the book, then check out the video, it's a great executive summary. I've found that one of the best ways to establish common ground is to let the other person or team talk about themselves. The more they talk, the more comfortable they will be with you and the more likely you will be to find something that you have in common. Although we all like to think that we are unique and individual and that we can never be put into a box, the truth is that we all inherently are social people who like to be part of a tribe. Your tribe may be academic, philosophical, political, military, geographical, and frequently just based upon proximity. So if the tribe you want to work with has a few unique characteristics, then take a few minutes to study your enemy and see what they are. If the tribe is vegetarian, then don't order a rare steak at their first business luncheon. If the tribe is full of environmentalists, then don't show up in your jacked up V8 pickup truck. If the tribe is anti-gun, then don't show them your lifetime membership to the National Riflemen's Association. Members of the tribe generally look and dress alike, so study your enemy and dress and be the part. If the tribe likes to hunt, make sure you wear the right hunting gear. Don't show up like a hunter-gatherer or something weird. Don't dress like an aristocrat. Do your research and show up in the appropriate hunting clothes. If your boss wears a suit and tie every day, then make sure you wear a suit and tie on the days you see him. When I lived in North Carolina, I never wore my Rolex and fancy clothes when I went to get my annual automobile registration inspection. Sometimes I would even throw in a slight twang. I made myself a bit country so that I could build rapport with the dude who evaluated my car. And during all the years that I lived there, my CJ7 always passed inspection. Sometimes, in order to build rapport, you need to eat a bit of humble pie and kiss the ring. I get this concept from the Catholic Church. As we all know, the Bible tells us that the first will be last and the last will be first, and that if you want to be a Christian leader, then you must be the servant of all. So it's kind of silly that some priests have people kiss the ring. But if that's what it takes to get your foot in the door, then kiss the ring. Of course, there are times when you need to go in fighting and let your opponent know that you think he's an idiot. But more often than not, you can get further when dealing with a clown if you kiss his ring and you let him know that you know how awesome he is. Let him think that you see him as the leader. Let's take a few seconds to discuss commodities. Not every transaction requires money. Some people would prefer to deal in other commodities. Again, this is when it's important to study your enemy. If your opponent's most important commodity or value is respect, then show him that you respect him. Give him a firm handshake and look him in the eye. 
If your boss is a physical fitness addict, then make sure he sees you at the gym in a company t-shirt. If the tribal leader values manliness and machismo, then send in the strongest and the biggest guy on your team. The senior medic on my buddy's special forces team grew the most amazing red beard while he was in Afghanistan. It was so impressive that the local village elders only wanted to negotiate with him, Commander Sean. The actual commander of the team was a great leader, but he quickly realized that he could get what he wanted much more quickly simply by sending in Commander Sean with his ridiculously macho red beard. Once you find out about the special commodity of your future partner, consider giving them an appropriate gift. Sometimes it's as simple as money, or cigarettes, or Cuban cigars, or jewelry, or alcohol, but sometimes it could be a jersey from their favorite football team, or a valuable old book. As an alpha male who doesn't like to waste my precious time, I appreciate people who get straight to the point. But in most cases, and in most cultures, they won't even consider doing business with you until they've had a beverage with you and have gotten to know you. They want to drink a beer with you, or take you for a coffee, or the village elder wants to sit down with you for some chai tea. Sometimes you need to slow it down a bit to make a better connection with your future business partner. Several years ago, as a captain, I was sent to do a mission out of a U.S. Embassy. Halfway through my tour, I remember running into one of my scuba instructors, a Navy SEAL senior chief, in the parking lot of the Embassy. What a small world. He and his team arrived yesterday to do some training with their local national counterparts and they wanted to do the right thing and check in with a defense attache officer. The problem was that they were in board shorts, t-shirts, and flip-flops. So I pulled the lieutenant in charge of the SEALs aside and I gave him a crash course on building rapport. I said, dude, check this out. The defense attache officer over here is a total pussycat. He's only interested in finding his post-retirement job, and for sure he could care less about fighting the war on drugs or the war on terror. If you go in there in shorts and flip-flops, you're going to get kicked out of his office and sent back to CONUS. So go back to your barracks, put on the best clothes you brought, preferably a suit and a tie, but for sure wear a tie, and then come back, kiss the ring, let him know your training plan and how to get a hold of you and of course, reassure him that you and the boys are gonna stay out of trouble. If you need any logistics or operational support, I'm your man, but for sure, don't go to see the Colonel unprepared and not in inappropriate clothing. He's a clown, but nonetheless, he does have the power to cancel your mission and to kick you out of country. Thankfully, he took my advice, and the SEALs went on to have a very successful mission. Okay, there you have it. Considerations for building rapport. Thanks for watching. I hope that you enjoyed the video and are now more capable of getting what you want. Don't forget to subscribe and to forward this video to a friend who needs to see this. Life is a special operation. Are you ready for it?